Hey, I'm so excited to share with you this brand new feature in Zermiter called Custom Outlines. It gives you the power to do things that were completely impossible with Zermiter before. This is amazing. All right, this is groundbreaking, but all right, but it because it's so powerful, it's very easy to mess up. So I don't want you to mess up. I want you to understand how to use it and how to unlock its full potential for your websites and for your articles that you're generating. It doesn't apply to every use case, but there's a lot of people with use cases for this that it's going to unlock massive amounts of power for. So without further ado, let's dive in. Let me explain how all this works. Now, you can find the custom outline in the Bulk Writer and also the Penny Arcade. So you click on Bulk Writer, there's a button called Custom Out Outline. And then in the Penny Arcade, you have the same button, Custom Outline. Now, it's not available in the SEO Writer for good reason. And, and this kind of goes to the first kind of training lesson on the Custom Outline. In the SEO Writer, it allows you to specify. The SEO Writer allows you to specify your H2s, your H3s, and your H4s. You can go very bespoke with your article, but it's slower because you're doing all that manually. And then also you can only write one article at a time. On the flip side, the bulk writer in the Penny Arcade, you can specify all your titles or one URL for each article, but you can't specify your actual outline. So your outline's up to the AI to generate, and that can be hit or miss for some situations. So think about this. Think about a recipe blog post. A recipe blog post, you probably want, so maybe you have a recipe website, you probably want some common things in there. Maybe you're going to have the history of the, and I don't know why I, I hate recipe blog posts because I just want the recipe. Okay. But you know, recipe blog posts usually have the history of the recipe. Maybe they'll tell you some common ingredients for the recipe. And then maybe they'll have a couple recipes on that blog post, or maybe they'll have one, but either way, they'll have the recipe. They'll have the directions on how to, how to, bake it or cook it or whatever it is. And then they'll give you some tips and tricks maybe on, on using that recipe or cooking that, that whatever, cooking that dish. And then they'll have some final closing thoughts or a conclusion or something like that. That format, that outline format could work for basically any recipe on a recipe blog post or on, on a recipe website. You could talk about uh, tacos and have it fit, follow that format. You could have it talk about uh, barbecue ribs and have it follow that format. Let me show you. So I have a recipe outline saved. So we'll go to recipe one. So we have history, common ingredients, recipe, expert tips, final thoughts. We could talk about barbecue ribs. We could talk about tacos. We could talk about pulled pork sliders. I, all I can think about is barbecue. <laughs> we could talk about grilled onions. We could talk about watermelon recipes or something like that. Whatever you have, you can plug it in here and this outline will work for all of those different formats. Now let's flip directions and talk about Amazon or product reviews. So let's say you're in the, the tool niche. Here's an outline that could potentially work for that. Lawnmowers, the design of the lawnmower, performance, product specifications, pros and cons, FAQs, and final verdict. That would work for lawnmowers. That could work for tape measures. That could work for hammers. Right. That could work for baby strollers. That could work for car seats. So there's a lot of different products that could follow this exact format. So that's what custom outline allows you to do. It allows you to write many blog posts using the bulk writer or using the Penny Arcade and have them all follow a common format. So let me open up some stuff that I've already generated. We're going to look at this recipe example first. I'm going to have another video that's going to demonstrate the Amazon example. Uh, but just so that this video is not too long, we're just going to look at the recipe example uh, first. So ultimate guide to, to barbecue ribs, ultimate guide to pizza, ultimate guide to, to tacos. Now, is this really an ultimate guide? No, it's really not. But I'm just trying to give you an example of how to use this custom outline. So I want you to focus more on the outline itself. So we'll bring up our outline and I'll bring up recipe one. Now, the ultimate guide to barbecue ribs, ultimate guide to pizza and ultimate guide to tacos. I generated all of these with this one outline right here. So we'll open up the ribs first and you'll see how this was impossible to do before custom outlines. Now I use DaVinci for all this. You don't have to use DaVinci obviously. 
so we've ultimate guide to pizza, ultimate guide to barbecue ribs, history. So pizza has been around for centuries with its origins traced back to ancient Italy. Barbecue ribs have been around for centuries. So their history is rich and interesting. In the United States, the history of barbecue ribs can tr be traced back to the late 1700s. So we have different content, but it's all about the same subheading. So the history of barbecue ribs, the history of pizza, common ingredients. So we have cheese, meats, possibilities are endless common ingredients. When it comes to making delicious ribs, there's a few common ingredients you'll need, such as brown sugar, garlic, paprika. And then we have a recipe. And then we have some expert tips and some final thoughts. So see how easy it is with this custom outline to generate very similar outline style articles, but with different subject matter. Let me open up the last one. We have the ultimate guide to tacos. It's the same thing. History, common ingredients, recipe, expert tips, final thoughts. I want to talk now about how to use this custom outline because this is a free form entry box. So it's really easy to, to, to screw stuff up if you're not paying attention. First thing I want to direct you to is the directions. Click this button right up here and it will take you to the custom outline feature directions. And by the way, and this is kind of an aside, uh, if you go to the main menu, there's a secret training link. I got to close this to get to it. Click this secret training. The secret training will take you to my help page. I used to have this button called help and training, but then nobody clicked on it because it sounded boring. <laughs> but there's actually a lot of good information on here. So I call it secret training now, and maybe more people will click on it and uh, go through the training before they ask me questions. But you can get to this the custom outline feature from that secret training page, but then also from the, the custom outline area in here. So let's first talk about how to create our custom outline. So we have our history. This is the, the recipe example, history, common ingredients, recipe, expert tips, final thoughts. It's as simple as that. You just put each outline item on a new line. Now, by default, these will be H2s. All right, everything you put on a new line will become an H2. If you want to make an H3, then what you do is we'll come down here, make a new line and put a single dash, like a minus sign. So I'll say minus recipe number one, and that becomes an H3. Number two, number three. See how simple that is? So when the AI writes, it's gonna create these as H3s. And this will then become a transition paragraph, transition H2 that will transition into these different H3s right here. Now, what if you want H4s? I personally don't use H4s in my blog post, but if you wanted to, you could say, you make two dashes, two minus signs, and then put a little space and say ingredients. We'll take that and we'll copy it and put it right down here. So now we have two dashes and the two dashes make this ingredients in H4. Here's another H4, here's another H4. So we have our H2, our H3, our H4. R H3, R H4, R H3, H4. Very simple to do. This is the same format. If I copy that and I go over here to the SEO blog writer, this is the very same format that you would use when you use option one. So I click copy and it pastes it all in here. This is the same formatting that we'll also use. So let's go back into our custom outline. And we're going to look at recipe two right now. So that's the very simple stuff. All right. We have our H2s, our H3s, our H4s. But now we're going to get into talking about custom variables. And custom variables is where the real magic happens with this custom outline. So here's my recipe two. If you'll look, I have the history in here, common ingredients, recipe, expert tips, final thoughts. But I also have these things in curly braces. I have optimized title auto h3 underscore three optimized title what are these these are custom variables on that help page on that directions page it will show you all of the different variables that you can use and how you should be using them there's no other secret variables inside of ZimWriter. i will be adding to this over time so definitely check back here uh, with each update but for right now these are the different variables that we have available to us Let's start with something very simple. Let me modify this, delete some stuff. These variables we're using are advanced. The two easiest variables to understand are list and table. So with a recipe, H2, 
or you could do this for H3 or H4, it doesn't matter. Having a bullet list is probably important for a recipe or a table maybe. So if we want to prompt, I'd say force the AI to write a table or, or a list, but sometimes depending on the model you choose, sometimes Turbo is not that smart. So you might not get a list or a table. With GPT-4, you likely will. With DaVinci, you likely will. But with, with Turbo, it's not, as, it's not as strong. It's not as smart. It's hit or miss sometimes, but you can still try it. If you want to prompt the AI, if you want ZimWriter to prompt the AI to write a table or a list, all you'll do is put the curly braces in and then you'll put list. And now, and you'll click update or save outline or something like that. And now this outline, right, when ZimWriter gets to this recipe heading, subheading, it will prompt the AI to write a list of bullet points, a list of numeric items, whatever. If you put in table, ZimWriter will prompt the AI to then write a table, a markdown format table. And you can put this wherever you want. So we can take table. We can put table there. Now, it wouldn't make any sense to probably put it in history, but we could do that if we wanted to. We can put it everywhere if we, if we really, really want to. Now, there's an option in here called enable lists and enable tables. So this is the main menu for the bulk blog writer. We have that enable list, table tables. And then also in the Penny Arcade, you have the same thing, enable list, enable tables. First question I get a lot is if I'm using a custom outline that has lists and tables, so we have like list. Should I be clicking these boxes over here? I don't recommend clicking these boxes, the enable list or enable tables, if you're using a custom outline. If you're using a custom outline, designate where you want the tables and the list to go. Otherwise, what could happen is um, you probably don't want a table in the final thoughts section. But if you click the enable tables, you very well could get a table in the final thoughts. You probably don't want that. Again, if you're using the custom outlines, leave the enable list and leave the enable tables off. So that covers the first two variables. You can read a little bit more about it in here. Then there's something called an auto H3, and this is powerful. So sometimes you might want some H3s. Now you can specify your H3s. We can say, don't burn your pizza. Uh, cook the pizza in a brick oven, etc. But the problem is, here's the problem. This outline we're creating is supposed to apply for all of the different blog post titles. So if we're writing a blog post title about barbecue ribs and about pizza and about tacos, the, the don't burn your pizza has no relevance to ultimate guide for tacos. The cook the pizza in the brick oven has no relevance to ultimate guide to barbecue ribs. So how can we get the AI to create some H3s that are relevant to the given title of the article inside of here? And that's where this auto H3 can come in handy. So all you do is you'll put in those curly braces again, and we'll type in auto underscore H3 underscore, and then a number. The number is going to be between 1 and 10. And what that's going to do is generate that many H3s. So if we say 3, when we run this and we gotta, we'll have to update the outline or save the new outline if this is the new outline, and then we'll enable it. When we run this, the AI will create three H3s for this particular H2 section. And again, we can put this wherever we want. We can put it here and here. I don't recommend putting it everywhere. Use intelligence when you decide where to put this. And now you'll also see this enable H3 button. So I'm enabling the outline here. So we, now we've enabled the custom outline. And I'm going to enable the H3s, auto H3s. When I start the bulk writer, I'm going to get an error message. It's going to say, oops, you can only enable this button or add this prompt in here. You can't do both. You can't have a custom outline with auto H3s and then also have this button selected. So you got to pick. It's like what we just discussed with this enable list, enable tables. So you're not going to want to choose this, all right, if you're using your auto H3s inside of your outline. In fact, you're really not going to want to choose enable H3s if you're using a custom outline in general. I don't recommend that. You're going to want to manually put this in where you want it. So that's your auto H3s. Now, there's something really cool called YT. That stands for YouTube. And, and if you don't already know, there is a button over here called YouTube videos. And what will happen is if you enable this, this option in here, ZimWriter by default will find up to three videos, one video for the first H2, 
one video for the third H2 and one video for the fifth H2 from YouTube that are relevant to the article, or at least it will try to, and then insert those. That That's useful, I guess, if you're not specifying a custom outline. But when you're specifying a custom outline, you want the YouTube videos to appear in specific subheadings. Like maybe you, you want the YouTube video in the second subheading. That's not possible with this YouTube videos button. So that's where this YouTube videos variable comes into play. So you can put the YouTube video variable wherever you want. So we'll put it right here for recipe, because that makes sense. We want, when we're talking about the ultimate guide to barbecue ribs, Zimwriter to go out to YouTube and find a video relevant to a recipe for barbecue ribs. All right, we could even put it for history and we could go YouTube and maybe there's a, a YouTube video for bar the history of barbecue ribs or something like that, okay? Very, very powerful. You do need Scrape Al to use this. Now, there's something very important I need to explain to you. Zimwriter will not allow you to use this YouTube variable along with enabling YouTube videos. You, you can't do both. For the, this is the auto insertion at H2 number one, H2 number three, H2 number five. You can't select both, but, and here's the little very important to remember, these other options, insert as embed code, and then these two options here will still apply, and they're intended to still apply when using the custom outline YouTube variable. So those were important options. You can still configure those options and these three options, insert as embed code, and then these two will still apply using the YouTube variable right here. But obviously the, this enable button will not work and this thing will not work. And then finally, the optimized title. This is the most powerful variable and it's, it's a little hard to wrap your head around how it works, but once you do, the light bulb will go off and you'll be like, whoa, this is amazing. The best way for me to demonstrate what this does is to show you what it generated. So remember our articles that we generated. <clears throat> Each one had the identical subheadings, history, common ingredients, recipe, expert tips, final thoughts. From an SEO perspective, that's not that good, all right? It's not gonna hurt you, but it's not gonna help you. Wouldn't it be better to have it say history of tacos? And then in the context of pizza, it would say history of pizza. That would be a lot more helpful. So the optimized title allows us to do that. So let me open up the outline that I used for the recipe too. And let me open up the generated article for recipe two. That's this one. I put them side by side so you can see. All right, so this is the outline I used, and these are the two articles we generated. Now, there's a couple more, very, there, there's this auto H3 in here. You can see how that works, but we're really focusing mainly on this optimized title and what it did. The first H2 is history. This is the original outline without the optimized title. This is with the optimized title. Look what it did. It said history of pizza. So optimized title, what's going on behind the scenes is we're making another request to OpenAI and we're saying, take this title, this H2, this history right here, take this H2 or H3 or whatever it is and rewrite it based on any background information that was supplied. Now the background is supplied in the Penny Arcade. I'm just telling you that. Uh, I think up to 1500 words it will look at. So up to 1500 words of the background information and then also the title of the article rewrite this heading. And so in the bulk writer, there's no background. So all it had is the title to go on. It said, instead of calling this history, I'm going to call this history of pizza. That's what it did. And I think from an SEO perspective, that's a lot more beneficial than just history. Now we also added this auto H3 feature right here. And we have our three H3s, origins of pizza, styles of pizza, popularity of pizza. You see how cool it is? That would be impossible to do if we specified the H3s inside of this custom outline. But by using this auto H3 and then and specifying three, the AI performed beautifully right here. So let's look at the next one. The next H2 was common ingredients. Now we said optimize that title for us. So the original article, the version without the optimized title gave us exactly what we asked for, common ingredients. The version with the optimized title gave us common toppings. If you think about that, what do you do with the pizza? You put toppings on it. That's actually much more relevant 
in common ingredients. Healthy recipe. So it changed recipe. So here is the recipe. It changed recipe to healthy recipe. Why did it do that? Just chose to do that. And then expert tips. We did not optimize that title and we did not optimize final thoughts. Now I'm going to close this. I'm going to leave the original one still open and we're going to go to the third example now. So this is where we really go crazy with our options. Now it's important to watch this video a couple times and then also definitely reread a couple times this instructional guide. A lot of what you're going to do with this custom outline is going to take time to figure out how to, number one, understand it, but then figure out how it's going to apply for your specific niche or types of articles that you're writing. This is not, you do it one time and bam, you have a the perfect outline for your the AI to follow. It's going to be hit or miss. So you'll want to practice with this. You'll want to probably use Turbo for a lot of your articles so you're not spending a lot of money with GPT-4 right out the gate. So this is the next outline that we used. Let me open up the result. All right. So cultural history. So it changed history to cultural history. Now, remember before in that last one, it had history of pizza. So the AI just decided right now to call it cultural history. Why did it do that? It's just what it came up with. We still have our three H3s. All right, our origins of pizza, pizza around the world, regional variations. Common ingredients was changed to common toppings again. Popular recipes was changed to popular recipes and styles. Now, if you'll notice, this is really interesting. This is more of an advanced concept right here. I created three H3s, or, yeah, three H3s. Recipe one, I did a single dash, single minus sign, and then recipe number one, single dash, recipe number two, single dash, recipe number three. Now I played with this for a little bit to see if I could get good output. And with DaVinci, in this situation, I got lucky and, and it worked out really well. I said, first of all, optimize this title because I don't want just recipe number one. I want the actual uh, title of whatever this is for. So it said re vegan recipe or vegan recipe. And then we got a cheesy recipe and a vegetarian recipe. So we have vegan and vegetarian. Maybe that's twice. You can modify that in, in, in your edit stage. But that shows you how you can use optimized title to flesh out a list of different things when you don't know what that would possibly be. So you can theoretically create a listicle with this, but you are going to be limited to the AI's knowledge. GPT 3.5 is not as does not have as vast of a knowledge base as GPT-4 does. Now, I prompted it to also create a list for each of these recipes. So we did get, a, I guess this would be a bullet list. Maybe this is our bullet list right here, but it used these little asterisks for our bullets. So we can just fix that. We did get a list here, and I got a list here. Cool. It worked out pretty well. I did also say I want a YouTube video for each one. So for the vegan recipe, it could not find a YouTube video for whatever reason. It tried, it, it couldn't find one. For the cheesy recipe, it found one. So let's actually go to this YouTube page and see what it found. It found an advertisement. <laughs> now let's see here. All right, cheese pizza recipe. That's pretty cool. And then vegetarian recipe. So this is the vegetarian recipe that it found. And usually if you're using Gutenberg, if you paste this stuff in, it will auto embed these things. So homemade vegetarian pizza recipe. Look at that. Super easy to do. And this has a, a very high likelihood of boosting your page on time because visitors coming to read about pizza recipes and they, they watch this YouTube video, they'll be on your page longer. And then finally, expert tips. We optimized the title and then also forced a list in this. So expert baking tips. That's pretty cool because that's what you're doing. You're baking the pizza. So tips on baking the pizza. And then it created a, a list from that. Pretty awesome. Huh? Now, this is just scratching the surface on what you can do. You don't have to just use this for, for recipes. You can use this for listicles. You could use this for tips. You could use this for Amazon product posts, product reviews. You're going to have a common review format. So Anywhere that you can have a that you can have a common format for your article, you have the potential now to use a custom outline and get much better quality output and much more consistent quality output for your website. Whew, that was a mouthful. I encourage you to number one, read that that 
help page. Where is it? That help page uh, a couple times for the custom outlines and go through this video a couple times. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments below. You can go to the Facebook group. There's 10,000 Zen writers in the Facebook group that can definitely help you out. If I have time, I can also drop by and help you out too. Other than that, I'd love to hear how you're using the custom outline to accelerate your content generation game. Uh, please drop a comment. And if I don't hear from you, good luck with your content generation. And I'll talk to you later.